Hello friends! Spring is officially here and that means that it is prime time to do one of our favorite hikes of all time, which is the Trans Catalina Trail. For those of you who are already booked for this year or for anyone interested in planning a trip, today we are going to break down everything you need to know about how to do the TCT. Normally, this is the kind of video we do in the member section, but enough of you guys have requested this, that we're just gonna try and see if this does okay in the kind of general algorithm. And if not, at least it'll be a sample for you guys of the kind of thing that we do in the member section in case you're interested in that because we break down all of our favorite hikes. So the Trans Catalina Trail is a Southern California hiking classic. The route takes you almost 40 miles and up to 8,000 feet of climbing across the entire Catalina Island. For that reason, most people don't do it in a single day or even two days, which is what we did. A lot of people will camp for three days, maybe even four days. Or five. <laughs> or five. There's a lot of different options, and we're going to talk to you about each of the different options as we go through. The trail is technically a year-round trail. It really is just weather dependent, but the nicest time of year to do it is starting now, through the months of September and October. We did it in the winter and we were really lucky because we didn't get rained on. But if you book your trip ahead and it rains, then you're just in the rain. <laughs> that's so that's true. why most people pick spring or fall. Summer is very, very hot and crowded, although it is beautiful. And very exposed. First things first, how do you get there and where do you stay? In order to get to Catalina Island, you got to take a boat. So there are a few different ferry options. The most common are the ones that leave from San Pedro and Long Beach. You have to book these ahead of time. The round trip fare is usually about $80 per person. And it's really important to be aware that the schedules can change just based on the season and also the weather. I was just looking today just to check out how the ferries were doing and literally they just canceled every single ferry over to Catalina and back because of the crazy winds that Southern California is having. So just keep in mind, things can change quickly. It is kind of an expensive ferry ride at $80, yeah. but let me just say, the dolphins oh, make it all worthwhile. So cool. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Most of the time, either on the way out or the way back or both, there will be schools of dolphins just leaping next to the boat. I think they like the kind of waves put off by the boat or something, they play in them, yeah. but it is spectacular. I mean, I honestly think you'd pay just to see that dolphin show. Yeah, it felt like a full on tourist attraction getting there and back. It was pretty incredible. Now you can technically take the ferries either to Avalon or to Two Harbors, most people will take the ferry first to Avalon because the trail starting from Avalon into Two Harbors, the views just get better and better as you go along. And Avalon's a really nice place to spend your first night. If you want to camp, there's a nice campground there, but also there are tons of hotels. Again, they're a little bit expensive. It's a kind of a tourist place, but really nice. It's just a lovely way to kind of start the uh, adventure with a pretty hotel, a nice dinner in Avalon. It's a lovely place to spend a day. We went for Adam's birthday, so we definitely splurged for the night in Avalon, got a really good sleep, which I think was important before starting the massive trek that we only did in two days. <laughs> yeah, because the next day was fully 26 miles. That was a tough day. So starting in Avalon, there are five campgrounds that you can stay in. The first one is in Avalon itself. The next one is Blackjack Campground which is about 12 miles from Avalon. So it's a pretty easy first day if you're trying to just, you know, do it kind of day by day and not do too much in a single day. The next one is Little Harbor, which is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, guys. I think it might be one of the prettiest campsites in the world. <laughs> and that's a pretty big first day. You're talking about almost 20 miles at that point um, if you're carrying a heavy pack. Mm -hmm. But wow, is that a really nice campsite. Mm -hmm. um, just right there on the beach, you're just looking out at the ocean, quite lovely. My number one tip for anybody planning to do this as a backpacking trip is to get a reservation at Little Harbor. I think you'll be so pumped if you don't have a reservation there. Like we did not want to leave. Yeah, we didn't want to leave. <laughs> it's hard to get reservations there, so you got to do it early, mm -hmm. but well worth it if you're blessed with good weather. Yes. The next camping spot will be in two harbors, which is a lovely little town, just adorable. And that's where we ended up staying our first night. We fast packed it. We did not bring a tent or a sleeping bag. 
So we just rented a little kind of hut with really like no blanks or anything. It was just like a mattress and a heater, which was honestly plenty after doing 26 miles the first day. It felt quite luxurious given that we knew we did not have to sleep on the ground in the cold. For anybody who actually wants to stay there, it's part of the Two Harbors campground. We booked the thing that's called the deck cabins. So it's all on the website. I think they're about like between 90 and 110 a night, which is not cheap considering we literally just get like a mattress that's wrapped in nasty plastic, but it got the job done. You're obviously getting the idea that this is not a cheap <laughs> trip. I mean, with the ferry and especially if you stay in hotels or even these cabins, it adds up but it's just so lovely and wonderful. You know, you just have to think of it as a combination kind of hiking trip and vacation. I think it's one of those things that you gotta tell yourself, this is a, I gotta do it once in a lifetime, it's gonna be a splurge type of a hike. Yeah, and last but not least, there is a gorgeous campground in Parsons Landing. Mm -hmm. Just like Little Harbor, it is fabulous. It's remote, it's right on the water, you can go swimming with lovely waves. It's quite something. So pretty. There weren't even that many people there either. That seemed to be the least crowded of all the campgrounds that we were at. That's true. We arrived kind of early in the morning and we just swimsuited up and did some fun swimming. Did we swimsuit or did I swimsuit? You swimsuited. I, I went to the natural <laughs> Okay. TMI, guys. This is a good time to mention water sources along the trail. Parsons Campground is the only campground that actually does not have a fresh water source. So if you do need water at Parsons, you can pay to have a full jug of water waiting for you in a locker once you get to the campground. All the other campgrounds, it's super nice. You can just get fresh water, fill up your water bottles. That was a great thing about the trail. So water is really easy to get, especially if you're fast packing it. There's plenty of places to fill up. And food is also quite easy. Great restaurants in Avalon. We had breakfast the first morning at the airport. It was really good. It was so good. Really a nice airport cafe. And just outside of the cafe, there's a herd of bison. Like that kind of roam and if you can see those bison it's pretty that's pretty special it's one of the most magical things about that island yeah the bison just roam around yeah the bison the foxes really really cool wildlife and then also in two harbors there are a couple of really adorable places to eat so you can always get food within about mm -hmm. you know eight to ten miles yeah, there's also like a little general store once you get to Two Harbors. Keep in mind, I could not believe how much they upcharge you for stuff at that general store. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're on an island, so everything's way more expensive. Two times more, three times more. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but it is very convenient. You can always find, yeah. you know, within a few miles, there's going to be some kind of a water source, or within about eight or ten miles, there will be a food source. I think dehydration and starvation are very unlikely on this trail. <laughs> So keep in mind, a permit is required for anyone doing this trail, even if you are awesome and only doing it in a single day, you still need a day hiker's permit, which you can just fill out an application online and get a permit for free. But if you are camping in a campground, that basically counts as your hiking permit. So they make it pretty easy. Definitely be aware that you can book your campground up to a year in advance and people are cutthroat. They will book on the very first day that they absolutely can. So you gotta kind of be on top of it, but there's workarounds, people cancel. You can just keep checking the website and try to get something good. Or you can do what we did, yeah. which I think is an excellent plan, which is stay in Avalon. It's pretty easy to get a place there mm -hmm. and it's pretty easy to get a place in two hours. Yes. And so if you just do it in two days, you have a really long, hard 26 mile, like 5,500 feet of climbing first day, but so worth it. So things to bring outside of your normal fast packing or camping equipment would be swimsuit because there's lots of great swimming opportunities, hiking poles because it is really steep in some places it really is. and you just yeah. want to take some pressure off your legs whether you're trying to do it all in a day or two days or even if you're taking three or four days but you have a heavier pack it's just nice to take that pressure off. So I would say hiking poles, swimsuit and of course a quick dry towel because we went in the water like three times in one day. So it's just nice to have those quick drives. The other thing that I just wanted to add is definitely bring lots of layers, especially if you're doing it in the shoulder season. It can be really cold starting out and just so, so, so hot midday. 
Oh my gosh, we were wearing jackets in the morning. Legit cold. And then it was so hot in the afternoon that we ended up just hiking in our swimsuits for some of the time. <laughs> so, I forgot about that. <laughs> it was so hot. It was so hot. In terms of tips from our experience, one thing I definitely want to say is that it takes longer than you think it will. We had a five o'clock cutoff to check in for our cabins in Two Harbors and we were sprinting. That was so stressful. Sprinting at the end because again, there's just so much incline that it just takes longer than you think it's gonna take. Plus it's just beautiful and you wanna stop and swim and you're stopping to have breakfast or whatever. Yeah. It just, so if there are any time cutoffs, just realize it's way better to start a couple hours too early than be an hour late and miss your reservation and not, you know, get a cabin. We definitely got way off track from just how beautiful Little Harbor was, that's for sure. <laughs> We basically had to run from Little Harbor to Two Harbors. Which was, was kind of awesome. <laughs> it was kind of awesome, but it was a long, hard run. It was long. <laughs> so we've mentioned the various expenses, but we just want to add it up for you guys so you'll know what to expect. Because we were honestly kind of surprised by how expensive it was, even though it was worth it. So for two people, you're talking about $80 each for the ferry ride, there and back. You're talking about around $200 if you stay in a hotel in Avalon. They're pretty expensive, but again, nice. Mm -hmm. And then in Two Harbors, it was about $100 for the cabin, plus whatever food you eat. Now, we ended up eating at a decent restaurant, both in Avalon and Two Harbors, plus breakfast at the airport hotel, plus snacks. So we came <laughs> in at around $700 for our two-day trip. <laughs> but it was worth it. It was worth it. It was really great. Um, you could obviously do it for less than that, especially if you're camping. Mm -hmm. But even then, you still got the ferries. Campsites can be what? $30 a 20 night? 20 to 30 a night per person. So it can really add up. Yeah. And yeah. so I would say if you want to do it the cheapest possible, you know, the ferry, there's not much you can do about that. Mm -hmm. Do campsites and then bring all your own food from the mainland because buying it in Avalon is very expensive. But even if you do that, you're probably going to be in for at least 400 to 500 bucks for two people. Um, or you could go up to like 700, I guess. Or if you wanted to stay in nice places, I mean, the sky's the limit. Because there's some really nice places there you could stay. I think it'd be so expensive. <laughs> it really can. <laughs> but it's always worth it. And then the last important thing to know is just about the route finding. We found it pretty easy to stay on trail most of the time. We downloaded the All Trails GPX ahead of time, so we had the map on our phone. We definitely recommend using that. I mean, there are signs along the trail, but you can get off trail occasionally, so always having that map is helpful, but otherwise we found it a pretty straightforward route. Yeah, I mean, you guys have watched us enough to know that we get off trail at least once on every adventure, and it happened in yes. Catalina too, but the All Trails <laughs> got us back on pretty quickly. Why do we always do that? I don't know. <laughs> Because I know why, because I get excited about, it looked like it should be this way because it's more pretty this way, but in fact, it's this way. <laughs> and he just has so much confidence anywhere, whatever direction Adam's going, that is the right direction. <laughs> That's why I prefer just going off trail, because then you can't be wrong. <laughs> okay. okay, so that is everything we think you need to know in order to do the Trans Catalina Trail. Definitely let us know if you have questions. We love this trail, we remember it vividly. So if anything specific, just ask us. Let us know what you guys thought and we will see you next time. See you next time out on the trails. Climbing higher, running faster, going.